Hi, I'm Gabby from the RBA. In a previous video, we introduced the Australian dollar exchange rate. In this video, we'll talk about why the exchange rate matters for the Australian economy. The exchange rate is important because it influences the trade and financial flows in and out of Australia. Australia is a small open economy. This means that we trade and invest a lot with other countries, and this matters for how our economy performs. The exchange rate is also an important channel for monetary policy to influence the performance of the economy. We can break down the effect of the exchange rate on the economy into two stages. The first stage is the direct effect of changes in the exchange rate on the prices of goods and services that we trade with the rest of the world. The second stage then captures how changes in the prices of those goods and services affect the behaviour of households, businesses and governments when they are making decisions about spending and investing. Across the whole Australian economy, the exchange rate then affects some of the key economic indicators that we look at here at the RBA, such as aggregate demand, employment and inflation. Let's talk about the first stage. As we discovered in the previous video, changes in the exchange rate affect how much of one currency is needed to buy goods and services priced in another currency. This means changes in the exchange rate affect the prices of goods and services in Australian dollars relative to another currency, such as the US dollar or the Chinese renminbi. Let's use a depreciation or decrease in the value of the Australian dollar to illustrate how changes in the exchange rate can affect prices. Keep in mind that an appreciation in the Australian dollar would have the exact opposite effect. When the Australian dollar depreciates, Recall that foreigners need less of their home currency to purchase a given amount of Australian dollars. As a result, goods and services priced in Australian dollars that we sell to foreigners, or exports, become cheaper for them. For example, foreign tourists visiting Australia will need less of their home currency to pay for their holiday here. So a depreciation in the Australian dollar leads to lower export prices. But on the other hand, recall that a depreciation of the Australian dollar also means that Australians need more Australian dollars to purchase a given amount of foreign currency. As a result, goods and services that foreigners sell to Australians, imports, become more expensive for us. For example, Australian tourists visiting overseas will require more Australian dollars to pay for their holiday abroad. Therefore, a depreciation in the Australian dollar leads to higher import prices. To summarise, the first stage looks at how changes in the exchange rate affect the prices of exports and imports. This directly affects consumer price inflation. This is because some of the goods and services captured in the consumer price index are imported from overseas. It's also because some domestic production uses inputs that come from overseas. This can change the cost of producing things and businesses may choose to change their prices in response. If the exchange rate depreciates, the increase in import prices will mean inflation also increases. If you haven't seen our videos on inflation, please take a look. So now let's talk about the second stage. By influencing export and import prices, the exchange rate affects the amount of exports foreigners demand from Australia and the amount of imports Australians demand from overseas. Before moving on, let's first have a little refresher on aggregate demand, or AD. One way to measure aggregate demand is using gross domestic product, or GDP. And you can find more information in our videos on these topics. Aggregate demand breaks down the total level of spending in the economy into different categories, consumption, investment, government spending, exports, and imports. So let's talk more about consumption. Think about your consumption, so all the goods and services that you buy. Some of these are Australian, say most fresh food, but some of them, like your mobile phone, are imported from overseas. In the same way, consumption in our aggregate demanding equation includes both domestic consumption and imported consumption. It works the same way for the other parts of aggregate demand as well. When we subtract imports from the end of our aggregate demand equation, we are actually subtracting all the spending on imports contained in all the other parts of demand, 
And we do this so aggregate demand only captures spending on Australian goods and services. So when you think about imports, it can be helpful to break them down in a similar way to the rest of aggregate demand. For example, imported consumption, imported investment, etc. So as we discussed before, a depreciation in the Australian dollar reduces the price of exports in Australian dollars for foreigners. If our exports are cheaper, they become more competitive in international markets where other countries might be trying to export similar goods and services to us. Since our exports are now cheaper, foreigners will demand more Australian goods and services. As a result, exports will increase. For example, when the exchange rate depreciates, more foreigners tend to come to Australia for a holiday because it's cheaper relative to before. If exports increase, then this increases aggregate demand and GDP. But from the perspective of Australians, the depreciation in the Australian dollar makes imports more expensive. The effect of a change in the price of imports on GDP depends on whether it competes with a domestic equivalent or what we call a substitute. For example, imagine you win some money to spend on a holiday. You can choose to holiday in Australia or overseas. If the exchange rate depreciates, then the overseas holiday becomes more expensive, but the price of the Australian one does not change. In this situation, you might be more likely to choose the Australian holiday instead of he heading overseas. In other words, you may substitute from a foreign holiday to a domestic one. So what is the effect on aggregate demand? If less overseas holidays are taken by Australians, then imported consumption falls. This means consumption and imports both decrease. However, more domestic holidays are also taken, so domestic consumption increases. The changes in consumption cancel out, and so we are left with the fall in imports. Imports subtract from the aggregate demand equation, so aggregate demand will increase. You can think through similar examples for investment or government spending. What about imports, where there's no domestic substitute, like iPhones, which are not produced in Australia? Well, the prices of these goods and services will increase and spending on them will fall. Consumption, investment and government spending will all decrease. So will imports. The changes in C, I and G fully offset the change in M, so there's no change in AD. As a result, we tend to focus less on these types of imports and more on imports that compete with domestic substitutes. Finally, let's discuss financial flows. Financial flows, also called capital flows, measure the investment of money in and out of Australia. This money is invested in a variety of things and you can find more detail in our explainer on the balance of payments. A depreciation in the Australian dollar makes it cheaper for foreigners to invest money in Australia. It also makes it more expensive for Australians to invest money overseas. As a result, both foreigners and Australians may choose to invest more in Australia instead of investing their money overseas. Some of this investment will increase Australia's capacity to produce goods and services, like, say, the construction of a wind farm or of a new factory. This sort of investment increases aggregate demand and therefore GDP. So to summarise, we've talked about how a depreciation in the exchange rate increases exports and lowers imports. We've also talked about how the depreciation in the exchange rate can affect financial flows in a way that can increase investment. Together, these effects result in an increase in aggregate demand and GDP. Higher aggregate demand will then lead to an increase in the demand for labour. This is because an increase in Australia's production of goods and services will require more workers. This increase in employment can lead to a rise in workers' wages. Higher wages flow on to a general increase in prices, as goods and services cost more to produce and as workers have more income to spend. As a result, inflation will also increase. So that's all for this video. In the final video on exchange rates, we'll discuss what factors can drive changes in the Australian dollar. See you next time.